Hi, I'm George. Let's take a look at the new features here in CorelDRAW 2021. You'll find these right here under the What's New tab on the welcome screen right there. And the first one, this is just CorelDRAW's own rundown of what's new. So you can just skip right past that. And we'll take a look at the new perspective drawing right here. Now for this, it's interesting. I'll bring up a file here. This allows you to put a perspective grid onto your workspace and then align objects to that grid or even draw new objects right on that grid. So to start off with, go up here to the object menu, come down to your perspective and choose draw in perspective. Now get this little cursor. What you need to do is to drag this out to make a perspective grid. But first, decide what kind of grid you want. Right up here is the toolbar for perspective and we have four different grids. One point, two point, three point. This is looking up at a building or three point looking down from the top. We'll just choose one point here's the easiest one and i'll just drag out a grid just like that let go and i build your grid and that has the intersection of the vanishing point right here now i can move the vanishing point around like that so you can get it just where you want that i can also up here change the basic look i can shore hide the horizon line right here i can adjust the opacity of the horizon line i can change the color right there i can shore hide the guidelines there they are I can change the density or opacity of the guidelines I can also change the color of our guides we'll just use the basic setup in here I'll now grab one of my objects over here and I'll pull this in so that I have it below the horizon line. Let me pull the horizon line up a little bit like that. And I'll bring this in down here so it's below the horizon. That way we'll see a top surface to that. Let's now grab our next shape right here. I'll pull this in and I'll pull it to the right of our center line here. So it's over here somewhere. And then right click on this, move to plane and move to side plane. There we go. Now it's a little bit too small. So I'll pull the corner out and bring it a bit better on our size. Now you may need to do a bit of adjusting as you do this and take it, get everything just the way you want. Because of course, being in perspective, it's going to be moving around as you're adjusting it. Just pull our top up here a little bit. So just a little bit of work here. You can get it to drop in real nice. There's our side view. So I want to put a top one on. Same idea. Go over here. Let's grab this shape. I'll just pull it in like that. Right click, move to plane, put this on top. There it is. I can now move this in position. And again, you may need to adjust your size as you go so everything fits properly and then once you get it into place you can adjust your size and it'll fit nicely right onto that perspective there we go if you want to draw a shape in here say i wanted to draw a side shape click on my side shape button right here grab our rectangular tool and i can then draw just like that actually create a shape right on that perspective grid let's just give this one a fill there we go so that's how easy it is to use this new perspective grid tool click on finish when you're done and there are your objects. Okay, back here to the welcome screen. The next new feature is the multi-page view right here. This is actually very useful. I'm going to bring up a multi-page document right here. And this document has five pages. You can see them across the bottom right here. That's page two, page three, page four, and page five. That's the normal way that we used to work with this. If I wanted to move something between pages, I'd have to select this object in here, cut it, paste it into the new page. You know, it's a bit of a hassle on that, but we can do that now. Go over here. I'll click on that plus sign right here and let's just activate the pages docker. There we go. And that's right here. Here's our basic view. And notice we now have two buttons. There's the single page view and here is a multi-page view. Click on that. We now see two pages. If I scroll to the right, you'll see other pages right in there. Not too exciting yet. It gets better. Go over here, multi-page view settings. I have my columns set here at three and spacing at one point seven. So you can adjust the number of columns and the spacing between your items right there. So that's all fine. Let's now just zoom back a little bit here, just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. And as you can see, I can now see very easily all my pages right on this one view. I even could take one of my objects and drag it onto a different page very easily from this particular view here. So it's really easy to use. Now to select a page, just click on the title up here. That page is then selected. So you have that option here as well. And finally here, you can do your new page, insert page, duplicate page, delete page, all your standard stuff right here. So it makes it much easier now to work with multi-page documents with this new pages docker. Okay, back here to our welcome screen. We'll scroll down just a little bit here. Next we here, collaboration dashboard, live comments. These actually work together, the same basic thing. And this just means that there is a new Docker that makes it very easy to work in a collaborative environment with other people. You can use that to upload content to your online CorelDRAW app space. And then other people can log into that and leave comments, reviews, and so forth. So it makes it very easy to work interactively and your comments do appear live as it's happening. So you can work in a current session this way with other people. Now to find that Docker, I won't go into all the details on this, but to find the Docker, go over here, click on your plus sign, and that's right here where it says comments. Click on that. Here we go. 
and then you'll need to log in and in here you could then come in and do such things as note tool you have an arrow markup tool highlighter tool freehand markup rectangle ellipse collaborative text tool and you can save and share to your cloud space through the Corel Draw app. And of course, some basic options as well. Now, I don't have my logged in right now, so I don't have that available, but you can use this to easily set up a collaborative environment for working with other people at the same time on your projects. Okay, let's just go ahead and close that one down. There we go. Next one over here is the multi-asset export. And this is also a very useful new tool. Let's go up here to the Spaceship logo right here. Let's say I wanted to save this out as a few different versions. You can actually do that. I'll close down this Pages Docker right there. We don't need that. Over here to our little plus sign again and open up the Export Docker. There it is. And I'll get rid of these things. So let's say I wanted to take this as all grouped right now into one group. And I wanted to export this out as a specific file type. Here's a GIF, JPEG, PNG, or even a PDF document. Maybe I need to have a GIF, a JPEG, and a PDF. Normally you would just save it out one at a time. And it could take you a, you know, a few minutes to do that. This can save you a lot of time because there's my first format. Let's go over here, duplicate. I'll change this one to JPEG and then duplicate. Change this one to PNG. On each one of these, I can click on that gear icon and adjust my settings in here for that format. Then export all of that at once with the export all button. So I can then save it as three different formats all in one shot that can save you a lot of time or if you want to save several different documents let's say i wanted to save these out as individual pdf files page one is currently selected i'll go over here to the export tab click on the add button this brings it in up here i'll just give this a suffix i'm just going to call it book and let's change our format here to pdf there we go i'll now select page two over here and add asset with these settings there's our page two copies of those settings to this page the same thing here for page three add asset with these settings so I can then export out those three pages very easily all to PDF all with the same settings that I had set for my first page up here so it makes it as you can see very easy to do multiple saves all at one shot and save you a lot of time okay let's go back here to the welcome screen most everything else in here is just improvements on existing stuff enhanced replace colors enhanced image adjustment already looked at this there's a new auto fit function where you can choose to fit your content to a space. Corel Draw now supports the HEIF format, which is your mobile phone format. Pan and Zoom has some improvements here. Guidelines have some improvements and Find and Replace have some improvements as well. The one other major change here is with the font collection here. If you organize your fonts into specialty folders, let's see you have a specialty folder for different jobs that you're doing. You can actually save the structure of those folders out as a separate file and then use that to recreate those font folders on a different computer, different copy of CorelDRAW. It doesn't say the fonts themselves. Those will have to be on the other computer, but you can save the structure of your folders and then import that structure into the other computer. Again, saving you some time if you're working in multiple computers. So there you go. That's a look then at these new features here inside of CorelDRAW 2021.